The Nature of Predators, Part 25, by Space Paladin, 15. Memory Transcription Subject, Governor Tarva of the Vinil Republic. Date, Standardized Human Time, September 28, 2136. Armed Colchians steered us into the docking area, where we landed upon our arrival. Our previous shuttle was outfitted with supplies, since the chief granted us permission to return home on a prearranged route. The soldiers fell back several steps, and monitored the human for any threatening moves. One of them curled their lip at me briefly. Noah settled down on an empty crate, clutching a knapsack that contained his meager belongings. He met the soldier's gaze without blinking. Staring was a contest of dominance, whether that was the intention or not. The Koshians gripped their rifles tighter and slunk back toward the entryway. You're gawked at all the time, Noah, I whispered. Not saying it's right, but I don't suggest that smoldering stare down as a response. It'll tickle their instincts in ways you don't want. I don't care how they look at me, but they're not going to look at you with disgust and hatred. If they want a problem, they can pick on someone their own size. He growled, loud enough for the guards to hear. Aggression and protectiveness were not the persona to exhibit on the verge of a first diplomatic encounter. The Federation representatives would see it as a predator cowing his observers. I appreciated his loyalty, but humans were a little too defensive of their friends at times. Those soldiers were entitled to their opinions. Thank you, but it's fine. A lot of people think I'm a disgrace to the Federation, and aren't happy that I imprison their people. I studied the guards' expressions, noticing how their scowls deepened at my words. Nikonis didn't even discuss consequences for the Vanille. So you agree with them? You had noble reasons for what you did. They can't find fault with that. Well, I've single-handedly fractured the Federation beyond repair. I guess that makes me a traitor to most folks. You're a hero to all of humankind, Tarva. Twelve species in the galaxy would even try to befriend us. We met what might be the only one who would try, before there was a shred of proof to our claims. Don't think we'll forget with the vanilla have wrist. I pressed a claw to my lips and flicked my ears toward the doorway. The soldiers had snapped to attention, breaking their deadlock with the irate predator. That could only mean someone was approaching. The human needed to make a good first impression. Flattering us at the expense of the rest of the galaxy wasn't going to win hearts and minds. A violent-skinned Colchian padded into the hangar bay, clearly resisting the urge to grab his sidearm. His steps faltered once he was within pouncing distance of Noah, like a magnetic force was repelling him from the human. The familiar officer crept to my side, using me as a living shield. How is he still not grass that Noah doesn't have a violent bone in his body? Didn't our journey here prove that much? The Terran ambassador grinned. Rissel! I was worried you were rotting in a cell. The Colchian rubbed his forehead. I was, until the Commonwealth finalized their decision on humanity. Chief Nakonis agreed that I had a moral imperative to intervene, and parted me on all counts. I did receive a disciplinary mark for my methods, though. What do you mean? Noah asked. While Nakonis agrees with my rationale, we can't have officers running around shooting their captains. I don't think I have the time to go through proper channels, but whatever. I see. So you're free? Why did you come here, of all places? Nakonis offered me an appointment as military liaison to Earth, and I accepted. My eyes widened, as did the ambassador's dilated ones. I thought that Russell hated being around predators. By his own admission, living around humans was a nightmare for him, and he couldn't fathom prolonged exposure to them. Noah stroked his chin in confusion. You want to be around predator generals and talk about war tactics. Don't you hate the thought of having one of us within a hundred miles? Forgive me if I've caused offense, Noah. Seeing your chemistry with Tarva, I think we could be great friends. The Colchian shuddered as he tried to meet the Predator's gaze. Others seem to adapt quicker and easier than me, but I don't want to give up. Truly. Do you think you can work past your fear? I asked gently. Have you identified what triggers such a severe reaction? I enlisted on a starship when I was nine. I don't recall another way to feel toward predators. It may take an unreasonably long time for me to work past these behaviors, and it would take considerable coaxing from you all. I can't imagine what this is like from Noah's perspective. I'm not sure I have the patience. If you'd like a different liaison, I understand. Sympathy flashed in Noah's eyes. Russell, we are willing to help you every step of the way. I just don't know why you would want to endure those... feelings. It seems unfair to you. Humanity made me realize we are stronger than the sum of our fears, that there is something other than being afraid. I haven't got there yet, 
but I'm grateful for that. Can you accept my apology? There's nothing to forgive. Your emotions are out of your control. The edge dissipated from the human sonorous voice, replaced by a warm tone. We'll figure this out together, no matter how long it takes. Great. Now there's other diplomats coming, so I'm going to make some preparations. Roussel skidded off to the farthest corner of the hangar bay and began prepping a second shuttle. That was a smart idea, since it was unlikely the entire crowd would fit in a single vessel. Hell, I doubted some of them would want to ride in a tiny box worth of human for days. The first officer was probably thrilled to charter his own ship for that exact reason. I watched the Koshin shoot furtive glances toward us, and pondered why his species hadn't agreed to full diplomatic relations. Chief Nakonis didn't appear hostile to humanity, and displayed more fairness than I anticipated. The prospect of harm befalling Noah seemed to offend him even. When my expectations were little more than a fossil hearing, a genuine debate was astounding. I guess Nikonis didn't propose a full partnership, because he doesn't believe humans can reciprocate their cordiality in a meaningful way. Nonetheless, I thought the Koshin Commonwealth might come around as an ally. They had already seized the initiative by sending a military liaison. Even those guards were anchored by my lack of accountability rather than Noah's presence. Maybe it was just too large of a leap for most governments to make at once. Our Zerulian ambassador Chaucen skittered into the room. Something seemed to have been bashed against his head, and green blood trailed down his snout. The furry scientist looked unsteady on his feet, but it was a good sign that he wasn't shy of Noah in his wounded state. It violated every prey instinct to wander up to a predator like this. Noah squinted with concern. Are you alright, Chaucen? Please, let me take a look at that. What happened? I gasped. The Zerulian sighed. A bunch of people rushed to leave the chamber when the fighting broke out. Someone clubbed me over the noggin. I didn't see who. Probably because I testified with a generous view on humanity. The pundits think I swayed some hostile votes to undecided. All that for sharing the synopsis of human morality, Noah said. I'm sorry. I never wanted you to be assaulted. It's fine. The scientist licked a foreleg absentmindedly, smoothing out the brown fur. I look tougher now when I force you to take me to your planet. <laughs> Even Charva won't go to Earth. Why not? You haven't invited her? Or... It's complicated, but Elias Meyer, our leader, extended the invitation, had an herbivorous banquet, live music, and a tour of New York City in the works. Tarva refused. I switched my tail with the indignation. It's a different story after the experiment, Snowa. You think I was going to wander into a city with ten million predator residents less than a month after we met? Before anyone ever saw how you behaved in Pax? Noah opened his mouth to respond, but snapped it shut as he saw Chief Nokotis leading a group of diplomats toward our ship. These must be the species that constituted the affirmative votes for open relations with Earth. None of them had been brave enough to make introductions yet. Our Zerulian friend was the sole exception. It didn't surprise me to see the Sivkits or the Palatins in the mix. Their centrally located territories were far away enough that they thought they could keep humanity at arm's length and control or minimize the interactions. Even predators wouldn't start off the beaten path to gain a foothold. Us neighboring species were easier to invade first. Then there were the Yotul, the latest uplifts, adapting to the galactic arena was difficult for a species that just discovered steam power. I couldn't imagine how the Vanilla would have processed the Federation's vast knowledge in our infancy. Of course, if the Yotul's industrialism took us off to their presence, the Oxar might find them too. It was a lesser evil to flood them with information and give them a fighting chance. Twenty-two cycles after first contact, the marsupials tired of the derision from their counterparts. Most species dismissed them as primitive with a poor scientific understanding and little to offer as allies. The Federation military saw the Yotul as a liability, and wouldn't take their suggestions seriously. Gaining the backing of predators was a calculated risk, to coerce some respect from their peers. So far, no surprises. The Thafki seek protection, since there's only about 12,000 members of their species left alive. Well, not in captivity. The Nevox and Fissons are trading juggernauts, that don't want to go the way of the Gojids. I squinted in apparent confusion. Was that the Mazic president amongst their ranks? Perhaps this was not the assemblage of friendly species after all. It wasn't even a personal representative or aide. He was the only official dignitary observed in the group. Noah tensed, as he also spotted the beige-skinned mammal. I doubted my friend had forgotten who interrupted him at every turn. Koopa was rather outspoken against humanity, mocking the Terran ambassador for his eyes and criticizing simple arguments. Is the alien with the trunk just here to make trouble? The Mazic, you said? The human whispered, echoing my thoughts. 
Them and the Krakotol were the ones who couldn't stand my presence. Kupo swished his trunk. Your closing argument about the hypothetical friendship was profound. We are, in fact, desperate enough that there is nothing to lose. Am I not welcome here? I didn't mean for you to overhear that comment, Smazik. My apologies. If you desire diplomacy, I would not turn you away. Noah lowered his voice to its minimum, and pursed his lips in mistrust. Damn, Tarva. Those massive ears must be sharp. I snorted. No. Your ears are just bad. The human sighed. That's hardly the worst thing you said about us. I studied the waiting crowd. While the injured Nikonis bore no intention of making the journey to Vinyl Space, he opted to send us off himself. There was more sharpness in his gaze than fear. He wasn't shaking or whining the way Rassel did. Though I appreciated the officer's efforts, perhaps there were better candidates to represent the Kolshians. As for the newcomers, the Zerulian was prancing around the human in circles. Chaucin couldn't contain his excitement. He was the only ally eager to get up close and personal with the Flesh Eater. Meanwhile, the Sivkit diplomat looked like she was about to pass out, standing across from a predator. Logical talk of borders and distance didn't mean much when she was going to be trapped in Slayer. The Mazic president had the same suspicion in his eyes from the pivotal meeting. I don't think he trusted Noah's demeanor not to shift the second we took flight. There was a Dosser representative present, I realized, but the tiny rodent was hiding behind Kubo's bulky form. That size differential could only make the lumbering predator more daunting. That makes my account ten species plus the Kolshians. Maybe the last one is running late for some reason. Their representative might have had a panic attack. You're going to take the Yotul? I thought humans already invented the wheel. The Nevok representative sneered. A few chuckles came from the gathering, and even the Kolshian chief struggled to maintain a neutral expression. The Yotul glowered at his critic, then fired a nervous glance toward the human. I suppose the general assumption was that predators would shun any species with weaker technology. It was tough to imagine that friendship was their end rather than the means. If anything, I think supposed weakness roused the Terran's protectiveness. Noah and Sarah were most partial to us in our moments of vulnerability. Judging by how my friend's lips curved down, he wasn't pleased with the Novak's simulation of their peer. We have plenty to offer, Tassa! The marsupial snapped. Maybe these predators will be less stupid than you and see that. Tassa flicked her ears. Like what? Name one thing that makes you valuable, especially compared to the rest of us. For one thing, we're the only ones here that weren't around for that vote. You know, the one where you unanimously decided to wipe out all life on Earth. Even the vanilla have that baggage. Silence fell over the assemblage. Trepidation played at the representative's expressions, as the fiery O'Toole reminded them of their prior decisions. Perhaps I could afford to issue a formal apology on that matter myself, though it hadn't been my government that arrived at that conclusion. It must be tough for the predators to forget our role in their planned extinction. Humanity welcomes all parties of all backgrounds. The ambassador cleared his throat, irritation flashing in his eyes. There is no need for derisive rhetoric or to prove yourselves by putting others down. We're a small group. We need to band together. He's right. There's too much at stake here. Quit acting like children, I growled. Gosh. On that unpleasant note, I must warn you that siding with us may put you at odds with your friends and neighbors. This is your last chance to turn back. Noah blinked in surprise as every part of you lingered. That was a risk they already considered leaving the acrimonious conference. All right then, let's board a shuttle and get the show underway. The UN would be delighted to receive a proper diplomatic envoy, but I knew I had to temper their expectations. There would be missteps along the way, and few species would act as casual as us. It took a long time to be comfortable around predators. Familiarity was the final phase of the adjustment period, which certain prey sapiens might never achieve. At least now, humanity knew where they stood with the Federation.